Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of Ask Cirque, the exclusive Cirque du Soleil YouTube series where we answer your questions. Missed out on episode one? Click this button in your top right corner or check out the description below. Last week, you heard from artists around the world, our crew at the international headquarters, and even the president and CEO of Cirque du Soleil. Who will we meet this week? Well, you're about to find out in this episode of Ask Cirque. Hi everybody, this is Ask Cirque. My name is Michel Lampris. I'm writer-director of Curios Cabinet of Curiosities, of Septimo Dia No Descansare, and one upcoming project that I cannot talk about. On Instagram, at Infinite Fall asks, what things you see to create a complete show? What thinking? I love that it's not perfect English. How can I create my own show? Infinite Fall, I like your name because creation is like that. You just fall, you know, and, and you have to trust that the destiny will catch you. Now, you know, if you choose to create something, it should be something personal, because the more personal you are, the more you will connect with the universal uh, uh, audience. So you have to work a lot, especially at, at Cirque du Soleil, because you're going to deal with acrobats who've worked since age five, like multiple hours every single day. So you have to work, it's not easy. It's super enjoyable, but you have to commit yourself to that. And to create a show, you need to, it's, it's a way of life. The, you walk in the street, uh, the way you look at life, it's, you have to be open, you have to notice uh, things. So create your own show, you have to accept that it's not just your show, it's the audience show, it's your colleagues show, it's not just yours, but you're super involved into this. So I hope I answered your question. Hello guys, my name is Nico. I'm the tracker in, the, in Totem. And uh, what I really enjoy about crowd animation, especially before the show, is, is to, to actually meet in person the people and refresh every time. So for us, it's like a new time each time. And basically, we can already start finding energy uh, between the audience and the artist. So this is something that uh, I mean, at least for me, makes it special every time. And uh, I'm trying to find little new details every time, uh, trying to, to have a few special moments with the guests, sitting, you know, playing around with them. And it's something that gives the tone for me, my energy later in the show. And I think it's the same for some of the other artists. And uh, yeah, that's really something important for me. And during then, the act, I also try to connect visually eye contact with them and uh, it's always something that keeps feeding their energy uh, through, through the show. Well we travel to different cities about every two months and I just love exploring places I've never been to, the local restaurants and coffee bars and performing in front of a di different audience and uh, meeting new people all over the world. That's the best part. You guys make auditions every year for new performers. Is it because current ones are retiring or do you guys change teams for a fresh new group of performers to keep your shows tuned and well performed by new athletes and young actors? We sign between somewhere between 500 and 1,000 or more uh, individual contracts with artists every single year uh, for many reasons. There are the um, re regular replacements that could be for uh, temporary or permanent for pregnancies, uh, vacations, sabbaticals, injuries, all kinds of stuff uh, where we constantly need artists. Uh, for the special events projects, they are just come and go, sometimes uh, projects that last one week, sometimes uh, a couple days. Um, and there are new creations where, uh, unlike most companies, where casting comes at the end, we actually come at the beginning because we like to develop roles on top of the artists uh, that we present. So if you can just imagine the volume of artists needed, if uh, we didn't do constant auditions, we just basically wouldn't have a pool to choose from. Uh, a lot of those decisions have to be made actually before we actually uh, have a casting call. So that's why we're constantly looking for talent. That's why we're constantly filling up a database with talent before we actually have a need. Because if we waited until we had the need, then we would probably be doing uh, auditions three or four every single day with no vacations and uh, no holidays, which would not be a great idea. I love being able to take myself into different worlds and to share it with the audience. 
um, and every time to get a different reaction. So I love getting to share my emotions and my talents on stage and share with the public. Me encanta que me hagas esta pregunta porque justamente cuando yo tenía 12 años fue cuando fue la primera vez que vi un DVD del Circo del Sol, de alegría, y ese día en mi mente entró un chip y me dijo quiero ser acróbata del Circo del Sol, entonces se lo dije a mis padres y ese fue mi objetivo. Desde los 12 años hasta ahora, que tengo 30, siempre he luchado por entrar al Circo del Sol. He hecho audiciones, he trabajado mucho, he entrenado mucho, he creado números, he hecho festivales, hasta llegar al sueño de este cumplido que es trabajar con el Circo del Sol. Entonces te digo que aunque tengas 12 años, que sigas entrenando, que lo tengas claro, que sigas con esa ilusión y que sigas con esa motivación hasta llegaste, porque seguro que lo vas a conseguir. Hi, my name is Elise Tellier and I'm corporate publicist in Montreal at the headquarters of Cirque du Soleil. David de Cantore one from YouTube asked, where was the first Cirque du Soleil show and how was it called? The first ever performance of Cirque du Soleil was done back in 1984 as part of the celebration of the 450th anniversary of the discovery of Canada. The first production of Cirque du Soleil was called Le Grand Tour and visited more than 10 cities in Quebec. Thank you for your questions and don't hesitate to send us your question at Ask Cirque. When dancers eat everything pretty much, but we try to eat healthy, we try to eat balanced, you know, Proteins, all the things depend on everybody's body's different, so you kind of have to listen to your body to know when what you need to eat. Okay, so to wind down after a performance, uh, what I like to do is I go back home and I chill or relax a little bit. Sometimes I call my family and um, or just watching a series, watching dance videos. But if I still have a little bit of energy left, I actually like to go on the ice and just just to skate or to dance just by myself and to free my mind to, like, not related to the show or anything, just to be with me, with the music, and, yeah, just to, to be in my own creative space. Yeah, what was the question? <laughs> Click here to watch more awesome Cirque du Soleil videos and playlists. And here for show tickets. And here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes, you have to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with all your friends. To so flip your everyday reality the surf way. Because everyone, every day is extraordinary. extraordinary.